Welcome back, Girish. Thank you, Pranav. Oh, uh, okay. So we have uh, we are about to start swaps in in, in this uh, segment. Yes. Uh, how how important is uh, swaps of from from an NISM currency from perspective? From an NISM from exam perspective, it's not very important because uh, uh, there won't be many questions from this topic. Okay. But still, uh, if you want to have a broader understanding of this uh, exchange foreign currency market, right, you need to understand what swaps are. Okay. So so can we just begin on swaps? Yes. Uh, so when we are talking about swaps. Mm-hmm. First of all, you have to understand what is the meaning of a swap, right. and as the term suggests, swap simply means exchange of obligations. Ex- right. Swap is basically exchanging something for another. Right. And in uh, currency market, it is explicitly exchange of obligation. Exchange of obligations and two, two different, different currencies. Currencies. Now, it, you cannot uh, pinpoint a single definition for a swap, right? Because uh, when you are exchanging something, it could be anything, right? You can it can be exchange of obligation. It could be exchange of uh, interest rate. Anything. Uh, I I remember uh, when when we were studying. I remember there was a very simple example that we were given on how 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 a swap works. Okay. So let's let's just typically look at that. Uh, so what it basically says is that, for example, let's say Girish is coming back from US and has uh, hundred dollars left with him. Right. And uh, let's say Pranav. is planning to go to us yes and needs 100 dollars okay so so girish has returned from us and pranav is going to us right right so girish goes to a bank mm mm-hmm. and asks the bank what is the prevalent rate the bank says i will buy your 100 dollars At let's say forty five point five zero, that that that's the buy rate. Yeah. The, and one more important thing, uh, thumb rule for bank is to buy at low and sell at high. Yeah, naturally. Yeah. <laughs> that that's where they make money from. Yes. Okay. And similarly, Pranav goes to a bank, so he is going to sell, and Pranav has gone to bank to buy. Right. To a bank, hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and the bank says, okay. You can you can buy it at forty five point eight zero, which is my sell rate. Now what happens is that uh, Greece and Pranav meet each other yes. somehow, and Greece says, "Okay, I have hundred uh, dollars. Mm-hmm. Why don't you buy directly from me? Right. And I am willing to sell it to you at let's say forty five point six zero." Right. So, so Girish really beneficial. Yeah. So Girish Girish makes point one zero, and Pranav saves, so he earns this much, and Pranav saves point two zero. And so what they have basically done is they have swapped the currency between yes. the two of them. They have basically exchanged. They have exchanged. So so this this in very simple terms is the concept of a swap. Yes. And the most important thing is that. Uh, it is mutually beneficial for both of the parties and naturally it's mutually beneficial yes. and this is where the whole concept of swap lies right and it is uh, whenever it is beneficial to exchange things right. uh, you generally enter into a swap absolutely and it can be like i have already mentioned it can be any type of a swap it can be here is here there is simple a currency swap you can also go through a uh, exchanging of obligation Right, which we'll study further. Exchange of obligations, then there is interest rate swaps. Yeah. So let's just quickly look at uh, the PPD once again. I, I guess, I guess the example was just to show that how easy what a what a swap yeah, is. It is nothing to be confused. Yeah. Right. So basic so let's, understanding of swap. Let's just let's just look at. Uh, yeah. So the example that you have here. Okay. So for example, there are two companies. Yeah. It's company A and company B. Okay. Company A is an Indian company having operations in US. Right. right? and uh, likewise company b is a us company having, having operations, operations in, in india, india. Right. right so both have a uh, different obligation for a indian company it would be obligation in dollars right. and for a us company he has to make payments in indian rupees right right so for example they a company a has an obligation of 1 lakh dollar over the next one year yes. so company needs 1 lakh dollars for yes. the next one year right likewise company b which has an obligation of Forty-five lakh, lakh rupees over, over the, the next, next one, one year. year. Perfect. Now, their obligations are quite matching. Right. And what they do is they enter into a swap, which is uh, a contract, 
वेर एन कंपनी ए एग्रीज टू पे फोर्टी फाइव लैख रुपीज विच इज द ऑब्लिगेशन ऑफ कंपनी बी राइट एंड सिमिलरली कंपनी बी एग्रीज टू पे वन लैख डॉलर विच इज द ऑब्लिगेशन ऑफ कंपनी एब्सोल्यूटली एट द प्रिवेलेंट एक्सचेंज रेट ऑफ वन यू एस डीजिकल टू फोर्टी फाइव रुपीज परफेक्ट नाउ वॉट दीज कंपनीज हैव डन इज दे हैव एक्सचेंज देयर ऑब्लिगेशन एंड दे हैव नेगेटेड द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द एक्सचेंज रेट सो सो नाउ दे आर नॉट ससेप्टेबल टू द एक्सचेंज रेट एक्सचेंज रेट Okay, so I'll just quickly recap this. So what you're saying is that company A is let's an Indian company in US, yeah, and uh, has to pay like one lakh dollars in in US. Yes, and there's company B, which is a US company in India, and has to pay forty five lakh rupees in India. Right. So instead of going to a bank mm-hmm. and 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 entering doing in entering into a contract with the bank, yes, and then f- trying to figure out the exchange rate risk mm-hmm. and all those all those mechanisms which yeah. are involved. Because we are talking about a period of say one year, right? And uh, one year the it, currency it, can move anyway. So it's it's a, it's a very decent. Period for yeah. for, uh, for being susceptible to exchange interest. Absolutely. Yes. So what you're saying is, company A swaps with company B, and they both decide mutually that okay, I'll pay your obligations, you pay my no, obligation, yes. and the current rate that we fix is one US dollar forty five rupees. No. So they both tend to uh, save on on any possible exchange interest that right. that can happen. And one more important thing is is the comparative uh, advantage we are talking about. Say, how do they eliminate this exchange rate? Is like. If Indian company he which definitely has an uh, comparative advantage in India right. would be paying in Indian rupees. Right. Okay. So and likewise company B which has a comparative advantage in US right. would be paying in dollars. Absolutely. So that's why they have negated the impact any, of any, any flux, uh, fluctuation in exchange rate. Absolutely. So let's just quickly look ahead and you've you've spoken of types of swaps. Yeah. You've spoken. I think the interest rate swap and the currency yeah, swap. Basically, uh, there are different types of swap, but we can categorize them into two types of swaps. Yeah. Uh, first is the interest rate swap. Okay. And uh, uh, as you all know, if you are taking a loan or an obligation, right. And uh, after paying uh, your uh, principal amount, you have also to pay the interest, which is uh, quite a big obligation. Right. So instead of swapping your original obligation, you can swap your interest rate. Absolutely. All right. So that becomes your interest rate swap. Second is your currency swap, wherein uh, you are exchanging both, both the principal and the interest. And, yes, principal. So, so let me just put it like this: You're saying that principal, you can swap the principal, and you can also swap the interest. interest. So, if you just swap the interest, it's interest rate swap. If you do a com- combination, yes. it's a currency, currency swap. swap. Perfect. So, uh, and, um, and options and yeah, the, or the swap, swap options. options. Yeah. yeah, options on swap. So basically, there are two types of options on swap. One is a receiver swap option, wherein you receive fixed and pay floating. Mm-hmm. Um, we are talking about the interest rate. Right. Well, we have two types of interest rate here: fixed and floating interest rate. So, when you receive fixed, you are receiving a fixed interest rate payment, and you are paying a floating interest rate. Absolutely, becomes a receiver swap option. Right. Likewise, vice versa, payer swap option is one wherein you pay and fixed and floating. receive floating. Uh, see, I, I think I think if you go a little detail into this, there's there's a whole lot of study to do in, on yeah, on it's options it's and swap it's options. A completely different topic. But I think from from the NISM currency perspective, which is which is why we are doing the video. Yeah. The objective. Uh, of this the issue. objective I think is limited to what has been mentioned, and this is what has been mentioned in the book. Yes, so we're sticking to that. Yes. I think what is important also is just that just basic knowledge of swap should be there. I think it's covered in the in the last two uh, yes. uh, slides. And if you look at uh, from the exam perspective, uh, the most important thing is would be the difference between a receiver and a payer swap option. Okay, so so we'll quickly recap because from exam perspective, this is important. This is important. A receiver swap option is basically to do with the interest rate part of it, where yeah. you say I'll receive a fixed interest and I'll pay you yeah. floating. Uh, floating. And in a payer swap option, you pay a, fl- uh, a fixed and receive a floating. Yeah. And it so, depends upon your, as I've already mentioned, your comparative uh, advantage. If you think your advantage is in uh, paying floating, then you will do a receiver swap option, and vice versa. Right, right, right. Absolutely. So, uh, what's the next part, or you cover in the next video? We will cover this in this video only. We okay. have some key points about this uh, for an exchange market. Okay. Uh, the most important thing for an exchange becomes necessary for import and export. Naturally, for already. for all kinds of hedging purposes. Yeah. Absolutely. We uh, will cover this in detail also. Yes, we will do it in detail. SDR, which stands for uh, Special Drawing Rights. Yes. Let me just write this now. Is the monetary unit? Yeah. Special Drawing mm-hmm. Rights. Is the monetary unit of IMF, which is uh, your international monetary fund. So, wherein uh, there are different uh, currencies in IMF. Mm-hmm. You have euro, you have dollar. 
but the the name for that uh, single currency would be SDR. Uh, you will have to explain this a little in detail. Uh, How, what what does this really mean? IMF is a global institution. Yes. And we're in different countries have their uh, deposits in there. Yes. Like so for example, US would be depositing it money in dollars. For European countries would be depositing money in rupees. Right. Right. So the, it's a mix of currencies. Absolutely. And the symbol for that or the denomination for that is SDR. So what you're saying is that 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 this complete pool of uh, currencies yeah. is it's represented no by yeah. NSDR. SDR. How how is this important for the examination? Uh, do they ask questions on this? Uh, if you can get a question, would be basically what's SDR or something. Yeah. Okay. The full form of SDR or a full form of IM. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> that would be really simple. <laughs> dollar index. Yeah, dollar index is a very important concept, mm -hmm. and as we know, the importance of an index is to give a broad overview of the market. Right. Same goes with dollar. Right. Dollar index holds an important uh, position because uh, most of the currencies are traded against the dollar. Dollar uh, dominates this market. Right. So when you want to gauge the impact of dollar. Right. You have a look at the dollar index. Absolutely, and it's a weighted index uh, which shows the movement of dollar against six major currencies. Okay, and these six major currencies are your euro, euro, your Great British pound, pound yen, yen, your Swiss franc, your, your Canadian, Canadian dollar, dollar, and your Swedish crown. Swedish crown. Right. So these are basically six currencies which are heavily traded in this market. So for if, if you want to have a view on how dollar is performing against these currencies, right. you have a look at so dollar index. So I think we'll quickly repeat this. You are talking of the euro, yes. the pound, the yen, the, yen, the Swiss, Swiss franc, franc, the Canadian, Canadian dollar, dollar and the Swedish, Swedish krona. Krona. Okay. Right. Uh, next we come to floating exchange rate. We have already uh, told you about the concept of a floating exchange rate wherein the market forces determine the price right which is like uh, demand and supply of currency in the market india india has a floating exchange yeah. rate with so active participation with active uh, participation Here, of uh, i would uh, like RBI. to step in and uh, yeah rbi how does rbi participate in the market like for example if you talk about huge swings in this market right uh, say for example dollar is trading at right uh, 39 rupees mm -hmm. which would be Beneficial for importers, but not so for exporters. Absolutely. And likewise, if it is at fifty rupees per dollar, it which will be, be beneficial be for exporters, exporters not, not for the importers. Yes. So RBI tries to maintain a equilibrium, equilibrium in the market sorts. by participating in them. So what they do is they either buy or sell buy in large quantities. Yeah, yes. Okay. And uh, next is your fixed exchange rate. Uh, we've already defined that. And uh, market participants, uh, as usual, are the investors, investors, speculators, hedgers, hedgers and, and arbitrators. Arbitrage. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, I think I think we've covered uh, quite a lot in this video series. Yes. What we'll do is we will uh, come back to you, Girish, okay. in the next video. Thank you very much. Okay, Pranav.